Hello, and welcome to ATP Report on this very special anniversary week of 9-11. We have two very special expert guests I'm very honored to introduce to you today. First, Claire Lopez is an internationally recognized expert on terrorism. She's a writer and a frequent expert commentator on that subject an extensive background uh, representing the United States around the world, uh, especially being overseas with the CIA. Uh, our second terrific guest is Dr. Bill Warner. He's a former college professor, a prolific writer, and the creator of the theory of political Islam. Welcome, Claire, and welcome, Bill. Thank, Thank you, Barry. So let's start with what happened 19 years ago this week. Here's a quick summary of the facts for those of you out there that need reminding. 19 Islamic jihadis hijacked four American passenger jets. 19 men hijacked four fuel-loaded U.S. commercial airplanes that were bound for the West Coast. From what they did, 2,977 people were killed in New York City. Washington, D.C., and outside of Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The attack was orchestrated and planned by Al-Qaeda's leader, Osama bin Laden. At the World Trade Center site in Lower Manhattan, 2,753 people died when American Airlines Flight 11 and United Airlines Flight 175 were intentionally crashed into the North and South Towers, or as a result of those attacks, other people perished uh, as first responders. The subsequent collapse of the towers killed more people. 343 were firefighters from New York, 23 were police officers, and 37 were officers with the Port Authority. And the victims were from between two and 85 years of age. At the Pentagon, 140, 84 people were killed when that plane crashed into the Pentagon and near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, 40 passengers on board were killed uh, traveling on United Airlines Flight 93. So that's what happened. And since that time, many more have died from disease and injuries from the cleanup. Unfortunately, only 60% of the victims have been positively identified according to the medical examiner's office. So let's talk about what happened, why it happened, and what we know. And let's start off with this. On 9-11, Islamic terrorists did this, right? I mean, that's what happened. But the common theme on 9-11 and shortly thereafter was, and you're going to remember this line, Islam is a religion of peace. So were these 19 men, almost all from Saudi Arabia, crazy nuts, or were they good Muslims? Bill, let's start with you. Let me say that I'm a big student of Muhammad and his ability to, as a warrior. He created a whole new form of war, which was civilizational war. This was, a new, this was not just bullets and bombs, but the ability to use all aspects of the civilization to win for Islam. And that's what we saw happen on 9-11. A very clever, if I may use the word, a t method of attacking one of the, the world's greatest power using almost no money. I mean, the dollar effectiveness here is amazing. So like I say, I'm, an, I'm a student of Muhammad and his ability to wage war. He created a new concept called jihad, but the jihad that we saw on 9-11 is the only kind of jihad that's our friend. Now, that may sound like a bizarre same to thing to say, but you have to understand that the other forms of jihad, which include jihad of money, pen, and speech, are far more dangerous to us than terrorist. And by the way, they were not terrorists. They were jihadists. Let's make that clear. So Claire, you remember George Bush standing up and saying, Islam is a religion of peace. And these 19 guys hijacked this religion of peace. Does that make any sense either then or now to you as an expert? I remember very well um, when and where he said that. He had gone to the great big Islamic Center in upper Northwest Washington, D.C. a few days after 9-11, 2001. 
And if folks remember the photos that were taken of him inside of that Islamic center as he was speaking, I think it's notable and it's very revealing um, to, to explain, to describe who are the people surrounding him in that photo. Right off of his left shoulder was Nihad Awad, the executive director of CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, that is the Hamas branch in America, Hamas itself, the Palestinian branch of the jihadist Muslim Brotherhood, and others around President Bush in that, in that photo also are Muslim Brotherhood. He was completely co-opted, surrounded by the Brotherhood, and did not even know it. So let's, let's be blunt. It, this is the series of events 19 years ago. I will never forget that day. I saw it live. Um, and for any American that was paying attention on that morning, for the rest of their lives, they will never forget it. So do we call this a lie or do we call it a mistake by George Bush to say Islam is a religion of peace and these 19 hijackers, we didn't know how many there were at the time, obviously, were co-opted, as you said. I think this illustrates perfectly my point, which I made earlier. The form of jihad, which is the jihad of death and destruction, bullets and bombs, They've rebuilt the tower, but we, that Bush's remarks here were the work of a civilizational war effort of intelligence type, information type. So we're still suffering from Bush's, this is a religion of peace because it's become only worse. But the religion, the, the, what the fire and bullets did, the jihad of the sword, we've, re, we, we, we've recovered from. So this just illustrates my point. The jihad of speech, pen and money, the Muslim Brotherhood is a far more dangerous event to us than Al Qaeda. Well, if you remember, to add on to that, Bill, um, when Donald Trump was running and was talking about the fact that there were terrorists that were Islamic, he was vilified as an Islamophobe as if he made it up and that there's billions and billions and billions of peaceful Muslims, but these guys were just the crazies. Claire, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, remember that very well. Um, that is exactly what happened. Um, and that is because there's a lot of wishful thinking out there uh, that among the one point, what is it now, six plus uh, billion Muslims in the world, um, there's, it, there's a terrible fear, first of all, and then there's a terrible uh, uh, willingness to, 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 to be deceived that there is some tiny minority of them who actually follow uh, the doctrine of their faith, who actually believe and practice the doctrine of their faith. If we applied that to any other faith on, on earth, Christianity, Judaism, you name it, and, and, and try to say that a mere a tiny percentage of the Christians on earth are the only ones who, who faithfully and devoutly practice their faith, that would sound absurd, wouldn't it? But somehow, when, when we look at the, uh, the Muslims and the Islamic faith, um, this is the willing uh, suspension of disbelief, I guess. And it's PR that started in the White House. And honestly, since George Bush said that 19 years ago, has been very rarely corrected. Um, it would seem on 9-11, the world changed. And ever since then, Islamic Jihad in America is here and it seems to be getting acceptable. The TSA um, rules for flying, for trade. I mean, everything was turned upside down and inside out. At least as far as America's concerned, that's when terror got to our shores. Um, did it start on 9-11 or did it just get here on 9-11? My goodness gracious. It's been here for 1400 years. Remember Muhammad, my favorite warrior, I said ironically, but it's some truth to it, was, not, was a failure as a preacher of religion. He became a success only after he became a jihadist. That was what gave him that, that in political Islam, that is becoming a political ruler. So this is what has led to Islam's strength. And by the way, let's go back to the who is the wrong or is or were the attackers on 9-11 real Muslims? The Quran tells us that 
they will go directly to heaven. They will go directly to the Huris in the paradise. So that is Allah's judgment on those people on Judgment Day. Not that they were wild and crazy, but come home, men. You have a home in Allah. Well, Bill, following up, uh, you're quoted as saying, on 9-11, I looked and said, it's here. Islam is here. What did you mean by that? Well, I've studied Islam several times in my life, but the time before 9-11, I had many Muslim students. And so they were, I, have, I have a very informal teaching style, encourage people to stop by my office. And some of them would try to pitch Islam to me. So I became interested in what was this Islam? I'd read the Quran in bits and pieces, but I decided to read it cover to cover. Once I read it cover to cover, I says, oh my word, we need, to under, we need to read Muhammad. So I read a biography of Muhammad and then I went, we are in deep caca here. So therefore when the jihad happened, I didn't need to read any books or anything else. I'd already seen what was going to happen. So that was a pivotal point in my life. I changed my life entirely since that day. I've devoted myself entirely to the study of Islam. But Islam is here to stay was what I said. Actually, what I said was, it is Islam. It is jihad. Islam is here. That's what I said. My whole life changed in that moment. Because once you read the doctrine, that's what hacks me off about all these people, nanner, 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 about Islam is, shut up of your face, read Muhammad, read the Quran, now come back and talk to me. Until then, shut up of your face. Claire, what do you say? Um, I, I, I couldn't have put it any better myself. I think that um, it may seem daunting uh, to people to read the entire Quran, to read the entire biography of Muhammad, or they just don't have the time or want to spend the time doing that. But you're absolutely right. Once you've done that, uh, you can never not understand Islam ever again. And it's very clearly laid out. I mean, it's, it's not, there's no mincing of words. Uh, in the in those uh, key textbooks of the Islamic canon, um, it is it is um, very clear. This is a um, a doctrine of conquest and subjugation of the entire world uh, by means of jihad for the purpose of establishing a universal Islamic state on earth under rule of Islamic law. Period. Well, it's it's all there if you want to read it. It's not hidden. You don't need a code book. You just need your two eyes and an hour and a half and you can get through it. I want to thank both of you for coming on today uh, in light of the fact that America will be remembering our dead and how the world changed uh, 19 years ago. Uh, Bill, tell people how they can find out about you and what you do, would you please? I have a website called politicalislam.com. You can see my videos, newsletters, books, the whole nine yards. And by the way, I don't really sell books. I teach, I use cell educational systems. There's designed for you to educate yourself so that you too can know what Muhammad said and did and understand the mind of Allah. Excellent. How about you, Claire? Where can people find you? Well, I don't yet have a website, but uh, you can find much of my writing, my videos, uh, and other presentations online at a couple of different websites. One is at theunitedwest.com. Uh, and its partner, shariacrimestoppers.com. Um, I'm also posted up at the Citizens Commission on National Security. Um, many of my uh, presentations are cross-posted uh, with Brandon Howes at worldviewweekend.com. Uh, and I am online on social media uh, at um, Claire M. Lopez on Twitter, on Parlay, and on Facebook, same by name. Um, and eventually I uh, hope to have a website. And both of you are on americantruthproject.org and uh, we're very happy to have you. Uh, for those viewers out there that have not yet subscribed to our text message alert system, I would encourage you to take out your cell phone and type the word truth, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202, push send, you'll be automatically subscribed to our free service that gets you brilliant insight like Dr. Bill and Claire's uh, joining us today on this show and all of our future stuff. We never charge for content. If you're a little more old fashioned, you can go to americantruthproject.org and sign up to be on our mailing list here, there and you'll get the same stuff for free in your email. For ATP Report, thanks for joining us today. I'm very new spot.